Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchas and welcome back to Arden Mage's tutorial slash playthrough where we are on our quest to dominate the game while also teaching you some of my tricks of the trade. So far so good, 10, 18, N, and it just so happens that the fact that I did say that made me realize that in two turns we will have to choose our Empire plan or something that I repeatedly forget to actually, you know, take care of. And if you have only one city on 1020, then first things first, you're probably not doing too hard, but it is still manageable to have only one city on 1020. Especially because when you only have one city and you are reaching this 1020 10, 1020 10, what? Whatever. <laughs> then what you can do is actually try to get to 30 influence and grab two empire plants at once. Whereas usually you're only able to get one because you know each city you have increases the cost of those effects. Now the problem is I'm not sure if I can actually gain enough influence to grab a new empire plan in just two turns, but I'll gain 10 influence this turn, so I'll be up to 29, and then I'll just need one more for 30. So it looks like everything is good in the neighborhood. I can make it work fairly easily. So let's make sure that I gain just enough. So this will give me 6. 2 times 6 is 12, which is enough as it turns out. And 2 times 4 would not, in fact, be enough. But 12 is. So I can just keep two population points working on influence. And as such, I will be able to get double Empire Plan schedules, thingies, whatever they're called. You know what I'm talking about. And as for the rest of my population, where well, I needed one of those guys to work on Bar Street so I can continue working on those. But what am I going to do with the other guy? I'm going to work on food because I also need some more extra population. More extra population. Yeah. <laughs> because apparently I need a whole lot more. So that's why I said more extra. Whatever. I'm not making any sense today so far, am I? Don't worry. I'll step it up in a second. Seed storage will be done in 110. Very good. I'll make good use of it because I certainly need it. I am a little bit lucky in terms of food and I only have three pop no four populations so far. Not too good. Especially when we compare to our enemy cities, which I cannot see exactly how many population they have But I can guarantee you it is more than four in total Maybe with this city is it's a newly created city It has less probably but in total those voters certainly have more food and more population as well Either way, let's go ahead and make our way over to those ruins and discover them so I can fulfill this faction quest at least the part of it ambushed I guess a glass steel and I have to kill an enemy army in return for some dust which is really good mind you because we do need this dust so as this means this message it's only one dredge not a big deal but it does give me a chance to showcase to you the zerts in combat again it will not allow us to see if they actually have been nerfed ever since the VIP build Actually it will, because I remember the graphic effect of their area of effects, you know, area of effect, no, yes, area of effect damage being uh, actually uh, executed. So I'll be able to tell you if they still have this area of effect damage or not. Alright, so I'll settle my units more or less like this. It's fine, I'll be able to kill the enemy before they get to me most likely. So I just ready up, no biggie. And actually, I should have made those guys hold their ground because I do not want to walk forward at all. In fact, what, what I want to do instead is walk backwards. Now, you may be wondering, what are those dots that I have right here? These dots are actually very important because those are morale dots. And this is one of the reasons why you can, for example, have increased attack or initiative. As you can see, this unit has one dot, so that's one dot of morale. This unit has two dots of morale, which means that it has better morale, which, as you can see, does increase its stats significantly. I mean, this unit has one dot of morale, it has 27 attack and 5 initiative. This unit has two dots, which gives it 31 attack and 6 initiative. I'm not entirely certain how it scales, as in what the numbers are exactly. I was not given this kind of graph. So I do not know exactly how much you gain from every individual point of morale. I don't know if it scales like percentage based or if it's just a flat out bonus like with the spells. Because yeah, if you turned on the annotations in the last video, I explained that I made a mistake. Those spells do give you a flat bonus to attack and defense, not a percentage based bonus. So either way, I'm not sure exactly how morale works, but I do know more or less how it works. And basically, if you surround your unit with friendly units, then this unit will gain some morale bonus. So the more units you have near your unit, the more bonus it is going to get. Of course, if a unit has is not near any other of your friendly units, then it's going to get no bonus. If it's attached to one unit, like this one for example, it will gain um, one point of morale. And this unit is surrounded by two of my friendly units, so it gets two po points of morale bonus. Really nifty feature. I like it a lot. I'm not going to lie. 
In a way, I think everything is queued up, so let's just go ahead and launch the battle. And I'm really curious to see if I'll be able to tell if I do have those area effect spells or not. So let's go ahead and see. I'm going to fire. And, oh yeah, it does look like I still have the area effect spell. <laughs> yeah, that is so-called the blue raid. And, uh, you know, in the VIP build, it did attack everything nearby the primary target for massive damage. It looks like this is still the case. It does look different to what uh, the to what our primary unit has because, as you can see, they both have the Child of Light ability. But this unit just kind of created a wall of stone when attacked, when and this unit just kind of raided death on the enemy. But as it turns out, I mean, we are yet to confirm it when fighting against multiple foes. But it does look like those guys still have this entire area effect damage, which is incredibly powerful. And you've seen yourself that those guys actually can pack a hell of a punch, even without area of effect. And more importantly, they have really high range. I mean, have you seen how, from how far away they were able to attack? I had a guy sitting over there that they were able to attack this tile. That's one, two, three, four tiles of range, which is quite a big step up compared to the usual three tiles of range. So those guys are not only incredibly powerful damage-wise, but they also have better range. It's sick. And area of effect, so yeah. Although I might have to put an annotation right there because maybe just maybe the range has been changed and maybe every range unit has full range. It is possible. <laughs> I'm not too sure about that, but I'm fairly certain that those guys have better range than others. Either way, my faction quest, as you can see, has progressed. I killed the unit and now I have to go ahead and find uh, the, the word of those voters. So I have to go there and talk to them. And this will, if I remember correctly, made me make me destroy them, at least I'm pretty certain that this is what it's going to boil down to, but I may be for a mistake and I don't remember, my memory sounds a little bit poor. Alright, so there's nothing else I want to do this particular turn, I'll just go ahead and finish it, and a new boss suit has been created. Very, very, very nice, I can now make a seed stage, which is something I'll definitely try to do. And now, since I have two Barrow Streets, I have no reservation as to making my Pillars of Knowledge. But before I do that, I need to make sure that I get Seed Storage, and I can speed this up for 193 dust. However, I can stop working on the food for a second and focus on industry instead, which is actually not going to make this any faster, as it turns out. But, if I then assign those guys, then they are going to make it uh, margin and faster, it's not a big deal. But it will be cheaper to buy out seed storage next turn if I want to do so. Honestly, I'm not sure if I do. It is free turns, I can wait for it. It is a lot of dust that I could use some for some of my spells or pillars. And as other mages, I actually do want to save up this dust. So I'll do just that. I'll let seed storage. It's so tempted to buy it out, but it is a very high cost. And generally speaking, you don't want to buy anything out until you have this deck. Preserved Slaves and Volunteers, which is going to decrease the cost of buying out structures significantly and you need to have this otherwise you will just basically sink in a lot of dust for something that you wouldn't necessarily have to sometimes you have to buy out something even without this tech but right now i don't think i'm in a situation so desperate that i need to so i'm not gonna do that what i am going to do however is place a bunch of of knowledge so there's going to be one landing over there let's turn off it see i can see the effect and then the other one as you can see they cost small i mean I'm not sure if you could see yeah, it costs 80 dust, as I told you. So I landed over there. And as you can see, the effects actually do stack. So this tile right now giving me five science. One from the city tile, because as you can remember, boss suits do give you extra one science. But also four exercises for each one of those pillars, which is significant. So I've been a little bit slow on the science so far, but now with this increasement of science, I'll be able to just steam power through, rocket into the top of science charts uh, on this entire map out of the, all those factions because this is how sickeningly good those pillars can be and this is really going to help us a lot. Now as you can see pillar empowerment is only going to take us four turns now which is very very nice and as you can see my output per turn is 33. Now what I want to do ideally and it is queued up as you can see is grab my public library because with this plus 20% science of uh, oh wait plus 20% of uh, before the modifiers, that's 27. Yeah, it is going to be fairly nifty. Fairly nifty indeed. It's going to give us a bunch of extra science, which is again useful, especially in early game, but also in late game as well, which is why libraries are good, but not as crucial for you as other majors as they probably are for other factions, because you can wait a bit longer before gaining those. Now, I could drop down another pillar of knowledge for even more science. However, the two most efficient spots 
are already taken by Pillars of Knowledge, and it would cost me 120 dust to actually, you know, get another Pillar of Knowledge. It is a far better idea in my mind to actually wait for those turns and then have enough dust to place a place down a bunch of other new Pillars of Knowledge, so you can gain those amazing effects and whatnot, and not overpay for them. Of course, sodas you may want to, you know, gain science inefficiently by pressing too many players of knowledge, but most of the time you want to be as efficient as possible. So you want to, you know, maintain this nice count of two, maybe three players. It depends. In early game you want one or two, mid game then you gain, you want to go for two, three, sometimes even four, and late game then, you know, there's no limit, practically speaking. So let's go ahead and end this particular attempt. There's nothing else for us to do right now. Which is very nice. There are some sisters of mercy lacking around, but they're not particularly problematic. And the Empire plan is here, and as you can see, I can go for two plans at the same time, which is really, really nice. So, what do I want to do as the other majors? Well, surprisingly enough, we do want to actually go for economic population later. Not now, it is too early to go for that, but later it is a really tempting thing to put your population into extra dust production because. You only need this dust to activate your spells, and they, uh, as you have already seen by now, very useful. So what can I do? I can uh, either go for extra percentage of dust, I mean science, which is what I will do in fact, because for other mages, with the amount of dust they gain, this is very useful and very nifty thing to have. Now what else can I have? Reduced biotic biot is another thing that I usually like to go for as other mages in the first Empire plan, because I may sometimes want to buy out a structure like last 10 or 2 tens. In the past, I wanted to buy seed storage, but it was just too expensive. With that, it's not going to be this, but especially after I get the slaves, volunteers, and prisoners, which I will get. Don't get me any wrong. Now, this is probably only going to. I'm probably only going to get this once because in the future, I will want to get some extra military because other majors actually have very, very efficient military. And once I gain access to Enqua wings, which are my top tier unit. I will want to reduce that and go for the military to reduce the cost of Enqua wings because, hey, get back to zero. There we go. Because the one unfortunate problem of Enqua wings, which are over there, is that they do cost quite a bit of industry. I mean, it says 80 right now, but those are unupgraded, and you really need to upgrade those guys, which are basically awesome phoenixes, to be entirely honest. But anyway, you do need to upgrade those guys to really help them be super efficient. And as other majors, you will probably suffer a bit on the industry front because sure, industry is important, but for you, everything is important, and industry is possibly the least important thing you can have because you need science because you make science. So yeah, that is this is where you can pull ahead in terms of uh, in front of any other player. You need dust in order to use your spells. You need food to grow your cities, which is very important for everybody. And influence, uh, not influence, and industry. Yeah, it is important, you need it, but not as much as other things, which is why you want to reduce the cost of your units and structures as much as humanly possible. At least, this is my experience so far. And obviously with influence, you only need it to have, you only need to have enough of it to assimilate factions or go for good empire plans. Right now, however, I can certainly move those bad guys somewhere else, like for example, more food, because hey, why not, I'm going to get six charge in two turns anyway. Although, if I move everybody in here, yeah, this will not change a single thing. So let's do it like so. Because I really do want this city to grow a little bit faster. We can turn off the Fitzy icons off now. And go ahead and parley with those dwarves. Now they will be... Hold on, what? Did I just bug out the game? I think I may have. This is problematic because I am told to find this village and parley with it. But I already did parley with it, which is smartly problematic because they gave me this side quest. Oh boy. I think I may have found a bug <laughs> that is actually going to be... Don't tell me it's happening again. Don't tell me that again I will not be able to complete the quest storyline in my future video series because this would be a bad. Now how can I resolve this possible bug? Uh, because I cannot parley with those guys. Because I already obtained a quest from them. Well, I could try to fulfill this quest, but I'm pretty sure that I'll still not be able to parley with those guys. But either way, let's try and do that. Let's go ahead and finish this guy's quest. So I'll do that when I can. I cannot move anywhere closer, though. Let's go over here. Why not? It doesn't change much. And I could fight those guys for experience. In fact, I will, because hey, why not? 
those rangers are also heavily damaged, so I will just auto battle, there's no problem, I'm all ready to fight, and I have taken no damage, obviously. And that's very nice. Alrighty then, so what do I do next is, fairly simply, I end my turn, because there isn't much else for me to do right now. And I'll continue ending my turn, because now I need to get to those ruins and try to fulfill those guys' quests, and see if this will unbug the quest line. But because, keep in mind, this is not only Alpha, this is a brand build that is even less official than Alpha. We're just kind of ridiculous that devs nowadays have to do Alphas within Alphas. Because of public reception, it's kind of mind boggling, but whatever. Let's not talk about this. Either way, as such, you can expect those kind of bugs to happen, and they will get polished out in the future. But right now, it does look like my factory quest is utterly bugged. This will be really bad if this is the case. I may have to reload a very old autosave and just get to this point of the game. If this is in the case, if I cannot unpack this quest, because I said I desperately need to be able to progress in terms of this quest, because I want to educate you how this quest works. So I'll see if I need to do that. First things first, let's actually go ahead and finish this quest. I have been trapped, I need to survive if possible and kill everybody. Not a big deal, especially since those are demons, and I can kill them fairly easily. Now, I do have Range Slayer, which isn't exactly a Flying Slayer, but I still will be able to kill those demons very, very easily. So let's go ahead into manual combat, and this will actually finally give us a confirmation if, indeed, my spells are out of effect, because up until now, I we were unable to get the final confirmation. Now, Demon's still very weak, still only with speed 1, unfortunately, so let's go ahead and make sure that I'm on a heal type of area. I'm a little bit close to those Demons right now, but it's fine, because I'll probably be able to kill them very, very quickly indeed. So let's go ahead and do something like this, ready it up, and make sure that my units stay. Now, as I can see, because I'm in this triangle position, all of my units gain 2 morale bonus, which is the most efficient way you can set up your units when you have 3 of them. Because, you know, all of them have free morale, I suppose that, it's very, very useful. Alright, so all of them are going to hold their ground, and uh, no matter who my zealots attack, they will also deal area of effect damage if they still have the area of effect damage. So let's go ahead and see if that is the case. I really hope this is, because otherwise I will be in some trouble, but not too much. So let's go ahead and see, let them attack, so there we go, and yeah, area of effect is still there. It does look like it has been nerfed, however. Also the... Audio effect this sounds very, very loud. <laughs> so I'm sorry if your ears are suffering as a result. But either way, yeah, as you can see, the area of effect damage is still there. Not as ridiculous as it was in the past, because in the past it was as powerful as your main attack, or almost as powerful. Right now it's less so, but it's still ridiculous, obviously. So either way, it's a really, it's a little under proof that and that all zealots are really, really powerful. So let's make our way back to this village and hopefully to unbug the quest. If not, then off camera, I'll replay the last, I don't know, 15 tears or something. And to get to where we are right now, of course, something will possibly change, but not by much, hopefully. Now, what do I want to do in my city? In 110, oh no, I already have C star, but in 110, I'll gain empowerment. So I'll obviously go for that. But what I want to do even more so is to gain a brown street. Now, there's a really, really core core cool post uh, on LLS legend forums about how you may want to set up your cities in order to be the most efficient because when you want to create a big city you have to balance things out you can go for a lot of food in production by just you know expanding your city in every direction possible but it will cost you a lot of happiness and you will not gain as much dust and sands and press and influence as you normally could but if you want to have a very compact city then you want to create a triangle, which will result in a lot of your districts leveling up to level 2, 3 and 4, as such giving you a ton of extra dust, science and influence, which is what extra levels on districts gives you. And also you gain suffer less happiness problems because better level uh, because districts of higher level give you more happiness. But you will not gain as much food and industry as you normally would. So there are those two approaches. But since this region is fairly isolated, as you can see fairly well protected. I don't need to have too much of influence in the industry and in the long game I'll probably want to have more industry and dust and influence over here so I will try to make this kind of triangle especially since the way I have this set up triangles will work very well because I will expand on this axis and this axis so I will still gain access to all of those anomalies this one this one this one and this one and still have my city super effective and efficient at least in the long uh, term right now it will take a long time to actually get this triangle working properly 
So, the other thing is, when you are playing as other mages, is that even if you do want to have this kind of triangle, you also, as you're making the kind of triangle city, you want to make sure that it is as scary as possible, because those pillars, they work on tiles around them. So you want to envelop those pillars with your city, if you know what I'm trying to say. So if at all possible, you want to build in such a way. Right now, however, we only have two districts. I mean, one district, district in one city center, so I just want to go ahead and... I have already public library. Oh, I forgot to build it on the last stand. Oops. <laughs> Where it happens, I guess. But anyway, next stand, I want to set up my next district over here. So I will get next to river, which will be nice. And I'll start camping around. And then what I want to do is create a district over here. Because then I'll have uh, this tile very efficient in terms of my pillar tile. And then I'll want to create another district over here, possibly. And only then I'll create, finish up the triangle by creating a district tile over here. So this will be a very efficient way of setting up your other major city. Uh, if you are looking for extra dust and science, which you should. And also this will help you combat unhappiness that you will gain from extra power students. Because keep in mind, they do lower your approval. At least on zero levels. Alright, some demons attacked me. I can auto battle this, it's not a very big deal. I shouldn't take any damage, indeed I did not. So very, very nice so far. Uh, do I want to create this empowerment faster? Possibly. How much faster though? Well, let's see. Can I make get extra population 110? Yes, I can, so I will do just that. Meanwhile, my army, it just killed some demons, so that's very nice. It's nice to be able to kill some demons every now and again, isn't it? So let's go ahead and I can parley, and hopefully this will unbug my quest. So, yes, it did! Yeah, I just have to replay all of this. Ah. I thought this might be the case. So, in case you are or in case you have already parlayed with a faction, oh, go away. <laughs> then, what you can do, in fact, is if you are in the process of being in a quest with this faction, you, you will have to parley with them again to fulfill the quest that you already have with this faction, and this will fulfill your fa main faction quests as well. So, this is good. We were able to avoid a bug, or this, this is still something that will probably need to be looked into in the future. Alright, so. This is our main quest, it has been updated, as you can see, uh, they have something that, uh, the rod of my dead brother, so I will need to kill them now, in order to get back the rod, which is a very powerful rod, but you need Hyperion to actually use it, which is a bit of a downer, because getting Hyperion can be a bit tough, as you remember, it is a very hard ore to acquire, the, one of the last steps of ore that you will in fact ever be able to get, still it is a very powerful rod, Regardless, and it is something that you need in order to progress, so there is that. As for the Devil's Faction, yeah, yeah, I have pacified the region. They now become my allies, which is kind of ironic because I'm now fighting against my allies. It is a the big army though, so I'm going to hold position and go into manual fight, because I want to make sure that I win this fight with minimal losses, which I can do if I set up my units correctly. Now, I want to be as far back as possible and since the main source of my damage are my zealots i want them to gain the privilege of being on the high ground because then they will be able to deal just so much damage when using their area of effect spells so let's go ahead and ready up the combat and i'll just stand my ground i could have casted the spell right there but i don't think it was necessary for me i think i should have just because this is a video and you know this would be nice visual uh, addition, but whatever. Now I can start firing. Now my arrow effect will not come into effect, per se, but as you can see, arrow effect also works on your primary target, which is why I was able to one hit kill those first stacks. Actually, not entirely kill this guy, but my kill was able to finish this guy off. And I think you can now see quite clearly why those zealots are so effing powerful. They can devastate your opponents so easily. This is why they are probably the most cost-efficient units in this game right now. And that's saying something, because I'm basically saying that they are better than Nectardones. Yeah, and they actually, with the right kind of rod, they can uh, counter Nectardones as well. So they are the ultimate fighting unit you can have, which is why other mages have some of the best units in the game. Alright, Mystery is wrapped in Enigmas. Yada yada yada, and we have proceeded to the uh, third storyline. So right now, I need to make sure that I have at least eight villages pacified within my whole empire. This is what I was talking about when I said, "Oh yeah, quest storyline will make you ex over expand a ton," because having eight villages pacified within my entire empire is mighty difficult. It will require at the very least usually four villages. Of course, as you, uh, as usual, we can pause the video to read that, because eight villages. 
Of more often than not, you will gain like one or two villagers in a, any given region, and you need to have eight of them pacified. So this means that usually you have to need you have to have like four cities to actually fulfill this quest. Really difficult for just era for just the third step of your quest storyline. Really difficult. It will require you to overexpand or conquer a lot of civilizations, a lot. And then the nasty thing is, once you are done with that, once you proceeded in the fourth step. It will just flat out say, hey, you should expand again. And by that point, you have nowhere to expand to. Thankfully, the devs have not acknowledged this thing when I talked to them about that. So this is something that will probably be looked into. And I hope this will be balanced out, because right now it is ridiculous. You may actually be unable to fulfill this quest until late game right now, because of how hard it might be to actually gain enough manufacturers. I mean, right now in my main region, uh, let's go into the proper view. I have one uh, village, which I actually have not discovered yet. How is that possible? Oh, because it might be it is somewhere there. Oh, right. I didn't even notice that there is actually continuous land over there. Yeah, but there is some minor village over there. Probably the Sisters of Mercy, I would assume. So yeah, if I were to pacify them, this would be one. All right. Then this region looks like it has one village, so this would be two. This region another one village, so this would be three. You see where I'm going, getting at, right? Three cities, three villages, I need eight of them. Now, you do not need to assimilate those manufacturers, which is good because then this would be absolutely impossible. You just need to make sure that they are pacified. And you can do this by destroying them, by bribing them, or by talking to them. But they do need to be within your empire, so you do need to have a city where, in a region where you pacified a manufacturer, which is just. Ouch, this should be lower to like six villages and this will still be kind of difficult to be entirely honest Anyway, he leveled up and I, as I said, I'll try to make sure that this hero is as much of a general as possible So I could gain keen observer which is not too useful but it does allow me to gain by him Which is insanely good especially on level 3 that's in total extra 7 attack on units 7 attack is a lot, so let's go ahead and try to rush that as quickly as possible. Apply the changes, yep, yep, yep. That's very nice. And now what do we need to do? Well, that's the only quest we have, so there isn't anything special. But I will need to conquer the city now more than ever, because it is, again, guarding uh, one of the areas that I want to conquer. But before we do anything of the sort, I want to move south to actually discover this minor faction we have over there. And pacify them if all, at all possible. Also, have I talked to this faction? Eabricus, I don't remember if I have or not, but I'll stop nearby anyway, so I'll be able to talk to them anyway. And if I have not piloted with them, then I will, because getting quests from your manufacturers is very important. I do feel like I did parley with them, but that's okay, I'll be able to parley with Sisters of Mercy as well. And you always, if possible, want to parley with manufacturers because it does give you extra quests, which are for the most part very, very useful, because they can give you some kind of cutting edge technology that nobody else will be able to get, which is good. By all means, alright, population grown, that's good, let's continue moving my people and let's have a uh, make sure that, have a make sure, whatever. Let's make sure that I get empowerment in 110 if at all possible and then I want to work a bit more on the food again because I do need to grow as quickly as possible. It is very important that I have more than just 5 population. I also want to expand, but the reason why I'm not expanding is because, as I said, Quest 4 will require me to expand into a region where there is a lot of science on the ground. So I'll probably be forced to expand to this region in the future. And as such, I do not even want to try to expand over there right now, because then it will be almost impossible for, for me to fulfill my fourth faction quest. I can have expand- oh no, it's raining. Oh no, it will be loud. Alright, that's okay. This video is, is actually fairly long, so I can finish it up if I need to. Anyway, I will probably expand over here because it's a fairly nice land. It does give you a lot of food, industry and science and also a bit of dust as a result of this area having some prairies and of course some coastal waters. And this is a region where there are Arikas and yeah, they are one of my favorite minor factors to assimilate. They are just so very useful and I do want to have them if at all possible. So I expand over there, probably right after I make my Boros Streets, but I do want to make one more Boros Street style just to have some extra uh, dust and info influence and science coming through from my districts because it's fairly important. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and finish this turn because there's much else I need to do. Pillars still standing, so that's good. I do not need to renew them. They're still doing what they need to be doing. 
And let's continue moving. Yada, 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 and there's that. Now, we can queue up uh, research right away. And as I said before, I will go for prisoners, slaves, and volunteers. I still do not bother with uh, open pit mine or uh, against furnace. But the reason for that is because if you have a quick look, I do not actually have much things to uh, gather in my home region. Uh, there are no luxuries of any description that I could possibly, you know, try to obtain. There are also strategic, strategic resources of uh, titanium and glass steel. I mean glass steel and titanium, but they are not exactly what I would call essential. I will need some better equipment to give it to Enqua Wings in the future, but I don't need to bother with it right now. Right now I think it's more important to actually set up some valid economy for your city in order to actually you know, keep going and proceeding through the game at a rather decent pace. So, as I said, I'll finish up the public library and then I'll make sure that whatever I want to buy out is going to be cheaper. And this will be almost at the era 2 level of awesome and then I'll gain the dust ledger because I'll have access to plenty of waters and this will give me a lot of dust that I do need. Of course, so sewer system is also very important but it is not something I need to have ASAP so I can ignore that for the time being. Also, just because I need to probably mention that, Stronghold Architecture is actually a technology that now you may actually want to have. Reason being, it does increase your defense cap, which actually works right now. Yeah. Well, what do I mean by defense cap? Well, it's very simple. I mentioned it in the past that if somebody besieges your city, then not only it will lower your city's fit production, but it will also deal damage to your units. However, it will only deal damage to your units after the city defense has been completely depleted. And you can increase your city defense by building so of architecture, for example. So right now, as you will be able to see, I have 8 city defense in my capital. So if somebody besieges my city, they will lower my city defense by 1 each turn. And once it gets down to 0, then all units within my city will start taking damage every turn. Now, however, by building Sokoko Architecture, I could increase my city defense up to 11, which would make sieging my city just so much difficult, more difficult, and would allow me to stay besieged over there for quite a bit longer. Alright, with that said, I can end this turn. And since... Uh, it's, how long is the video cast? About 30 minutes long. Alright, I'll continue walking forward a bit more. I want to see if I can parley with those guys. No, I already did. Alright, so that's good to know. So let's, I think I'll end this video cast after I obtain a quest for the Sisters of Mercy. This will be a fairly cool breaking point. And it's not like we have much to do. Right now we are playing a bit of a waiting game. And actually, I have gained the Purple Library. And I want to make it as soon as possible because it is just so essential to grab it. ASAP. In fact, can I get it faster within two turns at most? Alright, that's not too bad. Yeah, let's make sure that I get it within two turns. I can wait like so. Alright, so my army, let's continue moving it forward. I should be able to... what? Alright, so where is this one village that I have undiscovered? Oh, it's right over here. Alright then. <laughs> the last point area which I have not discovered is exactly where I need to go. Go figure. That's of course what happens usually. And that's okay though. We can just start making our way over there. Let's make sure that we're not actually walking through forests because forests are very... It takes a long while to walk through the forests, which is not ideal. And I should be able to finish up this public library in 110... If I put this my population like so, this is good. And the 10 again. And I think I can now say my... Oh, throw, never mind, it is actually winter. Now winter is actually fairly punishing for us because not only it of course slows down our food production, but it also slows down our dust production, which we really do need, as you are aware, in order to actually use our pillars. Which is a problem because, you know, with less pillars we are just so much less powerful. However, you do gain a faction quest later, later, later down the line, which does make your pillars more efficient during winter. So while early game and mid game winter, fairly punishing, late game winter, actually cool because it makes your pillars better by a level or something, which is actually very significant, mind you. Alright, so, what do I want to do? Well, my pillars just run out, so I'm obviously going to refresh them. Hey, I said I'm going to refresh them. Uh, there we go, I was unable to click it for some reason. So I'm going to place two of them right away, as I said, and this is going to give me a bunch of extra signs, very nice. Now, again, oh wait, it's 10.30. I thought it's 10.40 for another Empire plan. Thankfully it's not, so I have more time to actually get an extra influence. And even if I will be able to settle up a city before 1040, I might wait just to be able to get even more uh, power plants going, which would be nice. Alright, so let's continue moving along and the 10. 
and just go ahead and meet a uh, minor faction for the day. So it is, should be over there. Yes, they are. They are the Sisters of Mercy. I have discovered them. I will not get them. As I said in the, in the past many, many times, I believe that Sisters of Mercy fairly weak. Now, for other mages, they are not too bad because your anchor wings will probably take a lot of damage. And your anchor wings can actually tank this damage. But it would be better if you could make your anchor wings also heal up this damage. So, for this reason, I guess it is justifiable to get Sisters of Mercy for extra health regeneration. But Justices are just so weak and this bonus is so small that, nah, you shouldn't actually do that in my eyes. So let's go ahead and finish this turn. I should have looked uh, into my city, but that's okay. I'll gain extra preparation 110, so I guess I can put my people like so. No, I cannot apparently. All right. Let's continue walking like so. And get a quest from Sister of Mercy. Parley, what do they have going for me? They want me... Oh, to destroy a Silex village. That is very annoying because I wanted to talk to the Silex to get a quest from them. Now, the request I gain from those guys is the Grass Silk. And uh, then I'll just, if I remember correctly, just the next reward will be pacification. Not ideal, because I would possibly gain a better quest from the Silex somewhere in this region, so that's very annoying, but I guess sometimes you are just unlucky, and if you are me, then you're pretty much always unlucky. Alright, I think I already checked, I cannot move my population. So let's end the stand and end my video cast. It was Pancho, so also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer, that was a short one there. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, and as always, if you have some, if you actually enjoyed my video cast, then please do support me in any way you see fit, because it does help me out a great deal. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you online. Actually, I just resumed recording, <laughs> because I did realize we have finished our era, so we are entering the era of glory. Blah. Let me try to say this again: Age of Glory, and. Our faction music is kicking in and again, which is, I guess, why I'll continue recording for a few more minutes because I really like the main faction music for other mages, I really do. So, of course, the standard benefits of Era 2 apply as always, as usual, nothing new there, but it is very important because in Era 2, what you can get is that. No, that. Which is our kind of authority, which gives you a better pillars and better spells. So, first things first, uh, better pillar. No, 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 let me try and send this again. It unlocks a pillar of influence. It doesn't actually give you better levels. No, it doesn't. So there are two types of uh, improvements for other majors. One tap unlocks more spells and pillars, and this is the type of thing that we can gain right here. So this is going to give us a pillar of influence, which, as you might expect, gives us more influence in the city. And it also gives us the incantation of... Uh, Enervation or whatever, which stuns the enemies, which is super powerful and makes you win pretty much every battle ever And is one of the reasons why I would consider other mages to be a bit of a part right now So we're obviously going to get it because it is awesome Now the other thing we can get and which we will try to get as soon as possible Well, there are several things. One is that Cargo docks. You can now travel along the ocean. You can create, you know, bunch of water-based stuff, you can create harbors, all of this, very useful, and because I want to showcase this to you, I'll get this as soon as possible as well. And because of this, this unfortunately, anchor wings will have to wait. And they are so awesome, I really want to show them to you, <laughs> but they will have to wait. Of course, the other thing we have is that, plus one level for all spells on Empire. Now, I want to showcase the, all the new nifty gritty meaty features of uh, this current patch, which is why I got for this build order right now. However, if I were to play optimally, what I'll do is rush that. Rush extra level for all spells on Empire, because this would mean that my Pillars of Knowledge would be level 2, giving um, them uh, m extra science on the tiles they are working on, which is amazing, mind you, and you should grab that ASAP. You should, there's no reason not to. In fact, you know what? I know I want to showcase stuff, but let's just, this is just too good to pass on. Sure, it will make our spells and the pillars just cost a bit more, but it is by all means worth it. Now, usually what you want to also take care of is actually make sure that you do not neglect food and industry, which is why you would possibly want to go for Plow Factory ASAP right after grabbing the Dust Purifier. But I really want to showcase the new nifty cool features but I really need more food. <laughs> so I'll play this a little bit more like a normal person should. Don't worry, next video guys, we'll probably still get to see a kind of authority cargo docks and anchor wings as well. It's a shame we have to wait so long for anchor wings, but right now... 
In fact, you know what I attempted to do? Change of plans again. Go for Aqua Wings as a second thing I go for, and then I go for things like so. And do you want to know why? It's actually fairly simple. It's because I want to conquer the enemy city. And Anchor Wings will allow me to do this so, so easily because they are so, so very powerful. I'll show you exactly why once I get them. But right now, obviously, this video has been fairly long. So, thank you for watching again. And again, I'll see you online.